Bestbookbits.com presents To Sell is Human, summary by Daniel Pink. To Sell is Human offers a fresh look at the art and science of selling. As he did in Drive and A Whole New Mind, Daniel H. Pink draws on a rich trove of social science for his counterintuitive insights. He reveals the new ABCs of moving others. It's no longer always be closing, explains why extroverts don't make the best salespeople, and shows how giving people an off-ramp for their actions can matter more than actually changing their minds. Along the way, Pink describes the six successes to the elevator pitch, the three rules for understanding another's perspective, the five frames that can make your message clearer and more persuasive, and much more. The result is a perspective and practical book, one that will change how you see the world and transform what you do at work, at school, and at home. The written and audio summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring this book summary of To Sell Is Human. Like it or not, we're all in sales now. The ability to move others to exchange what they have for what we have is critical to our survival and our happiness. Whether it's selling traditional form or it's non-sales variation, we're all in sales now. Falazzo makes a distinction between irritation and agitation. Irritation, he says, is challenging people to do something we want them to do. By contrast, agitation is challenging them to do something they want to do. Those who'd receive even a small injection of power became less likely and perhaps less able to attune themselves to someone else's point of view. The notion that extroverts are the finest salespeople is so obvious that we've overlooked one teensly flaw. There's almost no evidence that it's actually true. The three key steps to strategic mimicry. Number one, watch. Observe what the other person is doing. Number two is wait. Once you've observed, don't spring immediately into action. Don't do this too many times though. And three is wane. After you've mimicked a little, try to be less conscious of what you're doing. Attuning yourself to others, exiting your own perspective and entering theirs is essential to moving others. Adam Grant had discovered that the most effective salespeople are ambiverts, those who fall somewhere in the middle of introversion, extroversion scale. How to stay afloat amid the ocean of rejection is the second essential quality in moving others. I call this quality buoyancy. Interrogative. Self-talk. The most effective self-talk doesn't merely shift emotions. It shifts linguistic categories. It moves from making statements to asking questions. On average, the self-questioning group solved nearly 50% more puzzles than the self-affirming group. People who'd written, will I, solved nearly twice as many anagrams as those who'd written I will, will, or I. Interrogative self-talk by its very form elicits answers and within those answers are strategies for actually carrying out the task. Researchers say interrogative self-talk may inspire thoughts about autonomous or intrinsically motivated reasons to pursue a goal. People are more likely to act and to perform well when the motivations come from intrinsic choices rather than from extrinsic pressures. Declarative self-talk risks bypasses one's motivations. Questioning self-talk elicits the reasons for doing something and reminds people that many of those reasons come from within. Those who've heard the positive inflicted pitch were twice as likely to accept a deal as those who heard the negative one, even though the terms were identical. Explanatory style. In human beings, Sligman observed learned helplessness was usually a function of people's explanatory style their habit of explaining negative events to themselves. People who give up easily, who become helpless even in situations where they actually can do something, explain bad events as permanent, pervasive, and personal. Agents who scored in the optimistic half of the explanatory style sold 37% more insurance than agents scoring in the pessimistic half. Agents in the top decile sold 88% more insurance than those in the bottom decile. The salespeople with an optimistic explanatory style who saw rejections as temporary rather than permanent, specific rather than universal, and external rather than personal, saw more insurance and survived in their jobs much longer. Hall is not blind optimism, but what Signal calls flexible optimism. Optimism with its eyes open. Question. Can I move these people? Answer it. Directly and in writing. List five specific reasons why the answer to your question is yes. These reasons will remind you of the strategies that you'll need to be effective on the task. 
providing a more sturdier and more substantive grounding than mere affirmations. When something bad occurs, ask yourself three questions and come up with an intelligent way to answer each one, no. Number one, is this permanent? Number two, is this pervasive? Three, is this personal? The more you explain bad events as temporary, specific, and external, the more likely you are to persist even in the face of adversity. Enumerate and embrace. One way to remain buoyant is to acquire a more realistic sense of what can actually sink you. You can do that by counting your rejections and then celebrating them. It's a strategy I call enumerate and embrace. Enumerate. Try actually counting the no's you get during a week. By the end of the week, you might be surprised by just how many no's the world has delivered to your doorstep. However, you might be more surprised by something else. You're still around. Even in that week-long ocean of rejection, you still manage to stay afloat. That realization can give you the will to continue and the confidence to do even better the following week. Embrace. It was my way of showing that I didn't quit. Goldberry says, I got all the rejections but kept going. Allow yourself what Fredrickson dubs appropriate negativity, moments of anger, hostility, disgust, resentment that serves a productive purpose. Fredrickson's work has shown that thinking through gloom and doom scenarios and mentally preparing for the very worst that can occur helps some people effectively manage their anxieties. Rejection. If this approach sounds useful, present yourself with a series of what-ifs. What if everything goes wrong? What if the unthinkable happens? What if this is the worst decision of my life? These questions could prompt answers you didn't expect, which might calm you down and even lift you up. One way to reduce their sting of rejection, and perhaps even avoid one altogether, is to preempt the rejector by writing a rejection letter yourself. Once the rejection is in writing, its consequences can seem far less dire. More important, by articulating the reasons for turning you down, the letter might reveal soft spots in what you're presenting, which you can then work to strengthen. Saving. Three in four Americans have less than $30,000 saved in their retirement accounts. Our biases point toward the present. So when a given choice between an immediate reward, say $1,000 right now, and a reward we have to wait for, $1,150 in two years, we'd often take the former even when it's in our own interest to choose the latter. Those who saw images of their current selves, call them the Me Now group, directed an average of $80 into their retirement account. Those who saw images of their future selves, the Me Later group, allocated more than twice that amount, $172. Those who saw the image of themselves at the age of 70 saved more than those who'd simply seen a picture of a 70-year-old. The problem we have, saving for retirement, the study showed isn't our only our meager ability to weigh present rewards against future ones. It is also the connection, or rather disconnection, between our present and future selves. Envisioning ourselves far into the future is extremely difficult. So difficult, in fact, that we often think of that future self as an entirely different person. This conceptual shift demonstrates the third quality necessary in moving others today, clarity. The capacity to help others see their situations in fresh and more revealing ways and to identify problems they didn't realize they had. Problem finding. The ability to move others hinders less on problem solving than on problem finding. As Chig Sai sent me I saw it, the first group was trying to solve a problem. How can I produce a good drawing? The second was trying to find a problem. What good drawing can I produce? When he tabulated the ratings, Chick sent me high, discovered that the expert deemed the problem finders work far more creative than the problem solvers. In subsequent research, Chick sent me high and other scholars found that people most disposed to creative breakthroughs in art, science, and any endeavor tend to be problem finders. You can raise that question by framing your offering in ways that contrast with its alternatives and therefore clarify its virtues. The following five frames can be useful in providing clarity to those you hope to move. Number one, the less frame. Of the consumers who visited the booth with 24 varieties, only 3% bought jam. At the booth with a more limited selection, 30% made a purchase. Adding an inexpensive item to a product offering can lead a, to a decline in consumers' willingness to pay. Framing people's opinion in a way that restricts their choices can help them see these choices 
more clearly instead of overwhelming them. Number two, the experience frame. Several researchers have shown that people derive much greater satisfaction from purchasing experience than they do from purchasing goods. Even when people ponder their future purchases, they expect that experiences will leave them more satisfied than physical goods. Framing a sale in experiential terms is more likely to lead to satisfied customers and repeat business. Number three, the label frame. In the Wall Street game, 33% of participants cooperated and went free, but in the community game, 66% reached that mutually beneficial result. The neatest group by far was the first, the one that had been labeled neat. Merely assigning that positive label helping the students frame themselves in comparison with others elevated their behavior. Number four, the blemished frame. Remarkably, in many cases, the people who'd gotten that smell dose of negative information were more likely to purchase the boots than those who'd received the exclusively positive information. The researchers dubbed this phenomenon the blemishing effect, where adding a minor negative detail in an otherwise positive description of a target can give that prescription a more positive impact. But the blemishing effect seems to operate only under two circumstances. First, the people processing the information must be in what the researchers call a low effort state. That is, instead of focusing resolutely on the decision, we're proceeding with a little less effort, perhaps because they're busy or distracted. Second, the negative information must follow the positive information, not the reverse. Once again, the comparison creates clarity. The core logic is that when individuals encounter weak negative information after already received positive information, the weak negative information ironically highlights or increases the salience of the positive information. If you're making your case to someone who's not intentionally weighing every single word, list all the positives, but do add a mild negative. Being honest about the existence of a small blemish can enhance your offering's true beauty. Number five, the potential frame. Participants on average gave the veteran player with solid numbers a salary of over $4 million for his sixth year. But they said that for the rookie's sixth season, they'd expect him to pay him more than $5 million. People often find potential more interesting than accomplishment because it's more uncertain, the researchers argue. Next time you're selling yourself, don't fixate only on what you've achieved yesterday. Also emphasize the promise on what you could accomplish tomorrow. Off ramps. Once you've found the problem and the proper frame, you have one more step. You need to give people an off ramp. Among the students in the least likely group who'd received the least detailed letter, a whopping 0% contributed to the food drive. But their counterparts, who were more disposed to giving but who'd received the same letter, didn't exactly well researchers with their benevolence. Only 8% of them made a food donation. However, the letter that gave students on how to act had a huge effect. 25% of the students deemed less likely to contribute actually made a contribution when they received a letter with concrete appeal, a map, and a location for donating. A specific request, accompanied by a clear way to get it done, ended up with the least likely group donating food at three times the rate of most likely who hadn't been given a clear path of action. Clarity on how to think without clarity on how to act can leave people unmoved. Clarity on how to think without clarity on how to act can leave people unmoved. Motivational interviewing. Number one, on a scale of one to 10, with one meaning not at least a bit ready and 10 meaning totally ready, how ready are you to study? Number two, why didn't you pick a lower number? In the old days, our challenge was accessing information. These days, our challenge is curating it. The three-step process for curation. Number one, seek. Once you've defined the area in which you're likely to curate, put together a list of the best sources of information. Then set aside time to scan those sources regularly, at least 15 minutes, two times a day. As you scan, gather the most interesting items. Number two, sense. Creating meaning out of your material you've assembled, make an annotated list of web links, or regularly maintain a blog. Tend to this list of resources every day. Number three, share. You can do this through a regular email or your own newsletter or by using Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. As you share, you'll help others see their own situations in new light and possibly reveal hidden problems that you can solve. The folks at IDEO, the award-winning innovation and design firm, 
have taken a lesson from the under five set in one of their methods that used to find design problems. They call their technique five whys. As IDEO explains it, this exercises forces people to examine and express the underlying reasons for their behavior and attitudes. The purpose of the pitch isn't necessarily to move others immediately to adopt your idea. The purpose is to offer something to so compelling that it begins a conversation, brings the other person in as a participant, and eventually arrives at the outcome that appeals to both of you. Dan Pink's six successes to the elevator pitch. Number one, the one word pitch. The ultimate pitch for an error of short attention span begins with a single word and doesn't go any further. Number two, the question pitch. By making people work just a little harder, question pitches prompt people to come up with their own reasons for agreeing or not. And when people summon their own reasons for believing something, they endorse the belief more strongly and become more likely to act on it. Number three, the rhyming pitch. Participants rated the aphorisms in the left column as far more accurate than those in the right column, even though each pair says essentially the same thing. Yet when researchers ask people, in your opinion, do aphorisms that rhyme describe human behavior more accurately than those that do not rhyme? The overwhelming answer was no. Rhymes boast what linguists and cognitive scientists call processing fluency, the ease with which our minds slice, dice, and make sense of stimuli. If you're one of a series of freelancers invited to make a presentation before a big potential client, including a rhyme can enhance the process and fluency of your listeners, allowing your message to stick in their minds when they compare you and your competitors. Number four, the subject line pitch. The researchers discovered that participants base their decisions on two factors, utility and curiosity. People were quite likely to read emails that directly affected their work, but they were also likely to open messages when they had moderate levels of uncertainty about the contents, i.e. they were curious what the messages were about. Utility worked better when recipients had lots of email, but curiosity drove attention to email under conditions of low demand. Ample research has shown that trying to add intrinsic motives on top of extrinsic ones often backfires. Along with utility and curiosity is the third principle, specificity. Number five, the Twitter pitch. The mark of an effective tweet, like the mark of an effective pitch, is that it engages recipients and encourages them to take the conversation further by responding, clicking a link, or sharing the tweet with others. Number six, the Pixar pitch. After someone hears your pitch, ask yourself, number one, what do you want them to know? Number two, what do you want them to feel? And number three, what do you want them to do? In those circumstances and many others, you'll do better if you follow three essential rules of improvisation theatre. Number one, hear offers. Number two, say yes. And number three, make your partner look good. Number one, hear often. Often we listen in this new, more intimate way. We begin hearing things we might have missed. And if we listen this way during our efforts to move others, we quickly realize that what seem outwardly like objections are often offers in disguise. Number two, say yes and. Instead of swirling downward into frustration, yes and spirals upward toward possibility. When you stop, you've got a set of options, not a sense of fertility. Number three, make your partner look good. Today, if you make people look bad, they can tell the world. But if you make people look good, they can also tell the world. But Grant and Hoffman revealed something equally critical. Our findings suggest that health and safety measures should focus not on the self, but rather on the target group that is perceived as most vulnerable. Raising the salience of purpose is one of the most potent and most overlooked methods of moving others. While we often assume that human beings are motivated mainly by self-interest, a stack of research has shown that all of us also do things for what social scientists call pro-social or self-transcending reasons. That means not only should we ourselves be serving, but we should also be tapping others' innate desire to serve. Making it personal works better when we also make it purposeful. Merely discussing purpose in one realm, car sharing, move people to behave differently. In the second realm, recycling. Serving others. This is what it means to serve, improving another's life, and in turn, improving the world. Greenleaf on servant leadership. The best test and the most difficult to administer is this. Do these served grow as persons? 
Do they, while being served, become healthier, wiser, freer, more autonomous, more likely themselves to become servants? If the person you're selling to agrees to buy, will his or her life improve? When your interaction is over, will the world be a better place than when you began? Upserving means doing more for the other person than he expect or you initially intended, taking the extra steps that transform a mundane interaction into a memorable experience. Anything you've tempted to upsell someone else, stop what you're doing and upserve instead. Don't try to increase what they can do for you, elevate what you can do for them. And that's a wrap on To Sell Is Human by Daniel H. Pink. Check out our YouTube channel with over 400 video book summaries and subscribe. Check out our website, bestbookbits.com, where you can find the written book summaries for over 400 books where you can download in PDF version to read offline in video categories such as biographies, business and marketing, habits, health, leadership, money, personal development, philosophy, psychology, real estate, relationships, sales, spirituality, success, and time management. For over 400 audiobook summaries, check out our podcast at mixcloud.com forward slash best book bits where you can listen to book summaries and check out our instagram page for daily motivational quotes and book summaries at best book bits thanks for watching and listening have yourself an amazing day thanks for listening and go out there and sell